Welcome to Phenomenal Woman. I'm your host, Janice Sutherland. Join me as we share the success strategies of phenomenal women achieving extraordinary success around the globe. From the good, the bad, the ugly, and everything in between, this is Real Talk by Real Women. We share with you the highs and lows of their journey and give you honest insight on how you can navigate same with confidence, integrity, and gain a little inspiration. As a leadership strategist, executive coach, and business consultant, I have the pleasure of working with organizations and individuals, helping them to turn their goals into success. Hey, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of Phenomenal Woman. As ever, it's always delight to share with you the interviews of the inspiring women we interview each week. Now, I know you've been doing it, so but please keep on subscribing, reviewing, and rating the show on iTunes or the, whatever podcast platform you actually use. Now, this week, we are in conversation with Karen Thorpe-Reed. Karen is a serial entrepreneur, a master change practitioner, mentor, business leader, speaker, visionary consultant, mother, and wife. And through her work, Karen embodies the motto of keeping people at the heart of change. As managing director of her own company, Premier Change Consulting, she possesses many years of experience in business strategy and corporate leadership. She brings expertise in leadership development, culture and behavioral change, having led teams, advised and coached clients on a number of large technology and cultural change related transformation programs across a variety of industries. Now, I'd ask you to pay attention to this week's recording. It was, we did have some challenges with the quality, but what Karen brings and talks about is very inspiring. So this week, ladies, I am joined by Karen Thorpe-Reed. Now, Karen, I would have done a short bio at the beginning of the show, but I wonder if you can tell us and the listeners a little bit more about yourself, your humble beginnings, and where you come from, please. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, just to say, in terms of where I come from, I'm I'm originally from West London. Um, I was uh, raised there until probably I was about uh, five years old. I then moved to the Caribbean um, okay. and moved to Barbados and uh, spent a couple of years there. And uh, I won't give you too many of the stories back and forth, but I have been to two primary schools, three secondary schools, two colleges and three universities. Wow. <laughs> so that will kind of tell you the, the kind of extension of the amount of travel. Right. My mum wasn't in the army. That, that says a lot. Yes. Sort of military background. It just was about life and, and, and what my mum chose to do. Um, in terms of background, um, I, 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 I don't have them. Um, well, I didn't until last year have um, have a degree. And, okay. Uh, uh, last year, I chose to do my masters, and I graduated um, at the ending of December. Well done! Congratulations. Thank you. And that was actually twenty years after I the first time I went to university and took a year out. Okay. Um, uh, so I got my master's with commendation, um, and I took out, took that time out and had my son. Okay. Uh, and uh, so my son was there with me at my graduation. Lovely, lovely. So what? So what was the drive between going back to for going back to university after such a long break? Um, I had always wanted to do it. I okay. think it was a very personal goal. Um, right. I think when you're younger and you're going to university, sometimes it's about your parents. Yes. About what want you to do and they want to make sure you've got a, a good sort of foundation and grounding yeah. and like any um, teenager um, I chose to do be a slightly a little bit rebellious around that um, <laughs> and I think when my dad had said to me when I was going into my second year that um, you know you've got to make sure you do well because I'm paying for you and all that yeah stuff. I didn't want to be held to account by anyone for um, what they were doing for me as much as right. I love my Yes. And, uh, I took the time out. I got pregnant with my son um, when I was, I was actually traveling back and forth to the States. My boyfriend was in the States at the time. Okay. And um, had my son and then chose to go to, to the States for a while. So I was in New York for a while. Right. Uh, and um, uh, I then, when, when that didn't work out, uh, I came back to the UK. And when I came back to the UK, I came back as a, quite a frightened, at the time, uh, maybe 24-year-old. Oh, no, she was 24, 24 years old then. Right. And 
and um, a little nervous because at that stage, you know, all I had was my um, my um, A levels. I didn't have anything yeah. else. Yeah. And, uh, I started doing some some temping work, and uh, and then led into an organisation um, which was the telecommunications company at the time, which was really large in Australia but very small in the UK. And I had the opportunity to then work in all of the different departments um, throughout the organization. And within the space of about 18 months, I became the um, troubleshooting manager for Europe. Right, right. A team of engineers. And this was me without a degree, but we <laughs> all had degrees. Yes. Um, uh, I They took the risk on me because I what they saw in terms of the skills was the ability to lead a team and not manage because I don't think I'm yeah. a very good Okay. Um, I think in terms of leading and getting that vision and people to follow you um, is one of the things that, um, as my mum says, if there's anything that you need to pay your dad for genetically, it's your ability to, to, to lead and to speak. Great. Now that gives me so much to kind of like, I'm jotting notes down here from the things you're saying. So the first thing I want to kind of pick on, um, you, you talked about obviously being in Barbados um, and the Caribbean. So you know how much education is, pri is, pr is prized in the Caribbean. Yet you went on to have a really successful career or to start a really successful career without academia. What would you say? What would you say would be if you were to go back? Would you say there'd been any advantage for you doing it for, 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 for doing a university degree? Or what's what's your view on that? So I think it, it, it's it's different for different people. I think if you are a driven and naturally a natural risk taker, then a degree isn't something that you absolutely need. Right. But I think if you are less motivated. Um, yeah. And I've always been very confident about the person that I am. Right. So I've taken a lot of risk. You know, um, first opportunities around with have been, you know, going into an organisation where I, I started off as a receptionist but ended up being their marketing manager because yeah. I was prepared to, yeah. you know, to put myself out there. Yeah. So I, I think there is there is something to be said about there is an ease of opening the door with a degree. Yes, very much. Yes, yes. Because you have a degree. Yeah, yeah. Um, but and I, I've encouraged my son to do that, and he's in his um, second year of university now. So I right. Yeah, that. yeah. Um, because I think there is there is an advantage to to opening doors in that respect if that's the choice that we want to do. Yeah. Um. So if I had to do it again, I think I would have chosen a different degree. Right. Um, right. What had happened is that when I'd gone in for it, I hadn't achieved. I didn't get get into the university I wanted to. Okay. So I had then chosen one of a different course, which wasn't the right one for me. Right, right. I think, you know, if any advice I'd give to anyone, choose something that you are passionate about. Yeah. Something that you can close your eyes and see yourself successful with in the future. Right, right, right. I've seen, I'm not sure about your own experiences. You know, I've interviewed lots of people in the past and, look on their CVs and they do have degrees and quite often they're not doing the job that relates to their CV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The advantage, sorry, to get your degree, so what it does give you, it, for an employer looking at you, it allows them to see that you have the ability to start and complete them. Right. I think that's what it shows. Okay, okay. Commitment to doing something and then seeing whether or not, and I would ask the questions, I don't ask the questions, what did you get in your final degree? I asked, what did you get in your first year? Right, right. Because that shows whether, you know, what level of commitment you had to doing this and the purpose and the passion behind it. Yeah, yeah. I think that's yeah. probably my Excellent. And, and I agree with you because um, I, I took, two, took my, all my degrees as a mature student and a mother of two and a divorcee by then, you know. And I think for me, one of the things it did, well, first of all, I suppose uh, I came from a probably a slightly maybe a slightly different era where it was, um, I was first generation immigrant um, coming, you know, in the UK. So it, it, getting a job was highly prized because that's what you, you know, that's what was known then. So going to university was, was, a, was a, almost a very much a luxury from, 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 that, from that degree. But I think what it did do for me, um, taking it as a mature student is that, like you say, 
I actually knew what I wanted to do then because I wanted it more to complement the direction I was going in because I do think it's difficult as um, a 13, 14 year old when you're choosing those subjects that are almost going to dictate the rest of your life, you know, um, for you. So, so it is a difficult thing. So, okay. And the second thing you said was that um, you didn't go to manage, you went to lead, you were the leader. So what's the difference for you between management or being a manager versus being a leader? Management for me is kind of technical. It's following the process. It's making sure that you do all the HR elements of things. It's understanding the process of whatever your particular discipline is. Yes. Managing your team through those steps and making sure that the governance is in place to achieve various different milestones of whatever it is you do as a discipline. I think leadership um, allows um, someone to really get a vision and a feel of how things are. It's about the culture that you yes. embed within your team. Yeah. People want to do it quite often, and I think sometimes it's been a risk for a lot of organizations that I go into and work as an, an interim or consultant because they say, well, when you leave, <laughs> people continue to do yes. what it is. Yeah. And I've managed to build in a skill into that. So there's a combination of the leadership, but then what you leave behind is people with an absolute passion and vision. Right. The vision that you've put in front of them. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Now, I think um, I know we digressed a little bit um, early on because you gave me such great answers. So tell us a little bit about, about your current career, your current career choice and what the motivator was behind that. So um, I, I work for myself. I have um, four companies now. Um, okay. And um, I worked as said, for many years as, um, as an interim. I've been working as an interim consultant for about 12 or 13 years. Okay. One of the things that I wanted to do is, um, I, I'm very, I'm a very bad employee. <laughs> In what respect? <laughs> <laughs> because I, I think, you know, I, I although I, you know, I, when I work within organisations, I manage politics well because I have to. Yeah. But it, if I have a choice, it's not one of the things that I feel is the most productive. Use okay. Of. Okay. So one of the things that I wanted to do was to expand um, my skills and what I'm doing and become um, more of having a consultancy and right. being able to, um, to do knowledge share and, and also to, to make a difference in terms of both my clients as well as um, the mentoring stuff that I do as well. Right. So, um, Premier Change Consulting is my, my core business. Okay. Um, we do business transformation, project and program management for a variety of, of large organizations and small organizations as well. Um, so we have some big um, um, companies in both pharmaceutical as well as in, in, in sort of the transportation um, industries. We have everything else in between. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of my core thing. And, you know, so we have a, a team of around about 25 who, who work on various different projects. Okay. So it's, it's really um, then I have the Flexi Bench, which is my online platform, which connects freelancers and businesses so that they can work together. Right. And it also allows businesses to connect with other businesses so they can bid for larger contracts. Okay. To meet you know different skills etc so that's a relatively new business which we launched last year in august okay um uh launched that in august and in september i launched another business with my son. <laughs> <laughs> so my, my son's first uh, foray out into the entrepreneurial environment right uh, so we have a soft play center in barbados right okay. uh, which is um, it's, a, it's a small um operation at the moment we wanted to prove the concept first um, so we do birthday parties as well as normal play sessions and it's been you know in terms of growth um, it's probably been about 600 percent um, since wow. we opened it's been wow. phenomenal and um, so that's been really great so that's been an, another side of the business and then I have Premier Angels um, which is um, about um, we started off focusing on, on women in right terms, um, uh, the seven-year plan we call it okay so, 
writing a book called The Seven Year Plan at the moment. And it's really about taking your life and putting some milestones in mm -hmm. and then having something goals to aspire to. Yes. Something about having a dream and realizing that dream. And quite often people knock down people's dreams and think that they're too far ahead or you should have a station in life and that's where you were born and that's where you should stay. Um, I've lost a lot of friends over the years because they, you know, I didn't go into too much detail in terms of background. Um, yeah. but anyone that kind of will know West London has got a, a mix of, of both wealthy and, and poverty. Yeah. Yeah. And, and there's lots of, of different experiences around and you have um, some people who've chosen to use their skills in, in, in not necessarily the most positive way and others okay. choose you know, to build on that and do it, you know, do things very positively. My parents, um, in terms of, of where they're from, my, my dad was born in the UK, a family from Sierra Leone. Um, and my father was a lithographer, which is a type of printer. Yeah. Um, and my mother um, started off working within sort of the secretarial sort of fields. And one of the things that's quite interesting, my mum did her degree at 60 um, and she graduated with my sister. Excellent. We didn't have the, you know, so I, yeah. I go back, so I refer back to what you were saying before, one of the things when our parents kind of immigrated to the UK. Yeah. Um, to get a job and yeah. uh, my grandparents came over first and they were you know my, my grandmother was a nurse my grandfather was yeah. some London transport yeah yes um, yes yes that was very much the mix and, and prior to that you know we would have had maids and before that we've been staves in the family yeah what what's notable for for our family and my mum um you know was studying sociology and um and she's now um we qualified as a social worker but one of the things that she said you know there is there is a um a theory in, in sociology around um how each generation works to build for the previous generation yeah yeah and not, not all families do that. Some families, there you will see the replication of, of what has happened in that generation just, just follows yes. through. But for, our, for our family, we've moved from, you know, slaves and may right through to the professionalism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, you know, being an entrepreneur, business owner, um, you know, holding my master's degree, um, with my son is now going to be third generation um, uh, graduate, so yeah. you know we've done quite in, in a relatively short period. Yes, of time. yes, yeah. yes. Um, so in terms of choices and where I am, um, I think I've chosen um, to to be in a position where I wanted to be empowered, where I could work when I wanted to work, where where I want to work. Yeah. Um, I I probably a holiday every month. <laughs> I like it. I like it style. <laughs> Everybody that knows me knows it's my absolute vice. Yes. And I saw, I, you know, I could see you nodding when I talked about the, you know, the friends that you lose along the way. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, they say misery loves company. Yes. And, uh, and, it, and it is so evident um, very much in both society, but very much in terms of the, I would say, the black community. Yeah. Often. And being in that way, we don't support each other enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I celebrate absolutely the successes of, of people, um, regardless of who they are. I'm yeah. so excited on their behalf when they do. And, and, and my friends always say, I'm, I'm, I'm very dramatic and very elaborate. <laughs> <laughs> When someone succeeded in something, I remember even back when my, my when our first friend who had gone through um, university and she qualified as a lawyer. Yeah. I'm from West London, good friend of mine. And, you know, my first thing, and you think about it, was I'm going to go and buy it. I bought her a pair. I think I think it was a, a pair of Prada shades or something. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know, that was my sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. proud of you, you know, and I, you know, shout it up from the rooftops. Yeah. Um, Premier Angels that I was talking about a little bit earlier on, um, one of the things that we have as well is, um, I mean, we, um, we've got a mutual friend, a couple of yes. mutual friends part of that group. Yeah. And, and what we loved about meeting together, because the first time they all met was on my um, fourth, one of my 40th, 40th birthday trips. Yeah. And, um, and um, 
we all were relatively successful in our field. And for the first time, we felt relaxed enough to talk about the successes without feeling conscious about it. Wow. Yeah. You know, such a powerful meeting. It wasn't, yeah. you know, we were able to talk about it without thinking that the other person thinks that we're boasting. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because we wanted to talk about some successes we've had, but also we wanted to explore from each other. Yeah. This is others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and that's the whole rationale behind doing Phenomenal Woman, um, because I want to celebrate successes. What I found fantastic is, and I speak, I mean, in the Caribbean, I mean, we're in the Caribbean, and you'd think you'd see a lot more women of color being celebrated. Um, but you don't, you know, it's really surreal for me. I don't see it enough. And I, it's been amazing how many women, how we've networked, how we've been, you know, how phenomenal they've been, for, you know, to use that word, you know, and the successes they've had. I've heard, you know, female engineers, you know, you know, dermatologists, leaders. It's just a diverse, it's just such a diverse range. And we need to show much more of that to the women other women coming up behind us we need to uplift because like you say we were very much keeping it keeping it close to our chest not telling people you know what we've done how well we've done because we feel there's a maybe a little bit of a stigma because we are being a bit boastful we are being you know who do you think you are you know what makes you so great forget that you know we've worked hard to get where we are we need to celebrate it and show and show that those coming behind us because we won't be here all the time how to how to emulate same so through all that karen what has been the most challenging satisfying challenge you've had to overcome so i guess um you know sort of building on on uh, you know sort of after i had my son and, yeah um, you know i worked through and as i said i became that european um, troubleshooting manager and then i took the opportunity at that stage my mum was relocating back to barbados yes and i uh, well, I'll come over and I'll help you know, you know, relocate with my, my siblings. And I went over to Barbados and um, I thought, well, you know, I'm dual nationality, maybe I'll <laughs> find something here. Yes. I looked around, it was very, very difficult. Um, at that particular stage of, 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 of you know, my time in life, it was about not what you, you had, but who you knew. Yeah. And, uh, we didn't really know that many people in terms of what to do to get a job. But um, just before I was leaving, um, I saw an ad in the paper, and um, it was for a role with, with Shell Oil. Okay. And at that time, Shell Oil was pretty big in the Caribbean. Yes, yes. And had a, a, a present. And um, can you hear me? Yeah, I, yeah I had, a, had a very big presence. And um, one of the things that I did, so I applied for the role and um, went through, uh, it was a five stage process. Okay. And um, yeah, it was, it was quite an extensive process. And um, the final um, decision was going to be made by the country chairman. So right. Because they couldn't decide. There was, uh, I think there was probably about eight people involved in the interview process. And wow. the four of them were dealing with with one of the candidates and then the other four were dealing with myself um, and uh, I was then told that you know it's it's come down to you know between yourself and um, this other gentleman and yeah I knew through someone else that he had you know he was in his 40s he had his degree and I was and his master's and I was um, 26 yes so, um, with with just the A-levels kind of thing <laughs> and um, so I thought well I you know I probably won't get this but I went in when I was going in to see the country chairman the HR director said to me, um, I just want to let you know that he's pretty um, punctual. Do you have 40 minutes in there with him? And at 39 minutes and 59 seconds, yeah. you're going up your, your conversation. Wow. You just want to make you aware yeah. of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, okay. So, you know, you kind of go in a slightly more under pressure knowing yeah. that... You know, <laughs> the clock is ticking, yes. Absolutely. But I went in and I started to speak to him. And an hour and a half later, I came out. Of wow. Wow. And she just looked at me. She said, that has never happened in the time that I've you know, worked with yeah. this man. And that happened. Um, so I went home and I, I, I'd already, because at that stage, I'd already packed my bags to return to the UK. Because I didn't think, you know, I was yeah. And um, 
I think it was literally the day before I got the phone call and she said, you know, we want to offer you the role. And wow. I was like, yeah, I'll take it. She said, yes. you don't even know how much it is. And I, I don't care. <laughs> at the role and interestingly I probably at that stage and I'll be really honest with you did not know the enormity of the role okay I remember on the first you know just before I was going coming back over I was extended for a couple more days because I was still coming back over to the UK for yeah that start. and I was taken in to see my office and the office was kicked out in mahogany you know right. I even yeah the old gap yeah, yeah old school office yeah <laughs> And um, as the person left me in there, I actually was like, oh my God, this is mine. Because yeah. yeah. like, I looked really cool. Like, I yeah, 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 yeah. I'm used to this thing sort of thing. And um, it was then when um, uh, I was sitting down with um, one of the project managers and he said, okay, so just to introduce you to our key clients, so I was going to be the customer services director for, um, for the region. So yeah. I, looking after nine nine islands and um, responsible for the very first customer service center in the caribbean okay um so um at that, that time you were kind of working with uh, cable and wireless were in right right stage so they were helping us to install it and i'll tell you a story about that in a little while yeah um and um they then said to me, we've arranged cocktail parties in, in each of the islands. <laughs> There's the Caribbean welcome. <laughs> yeah, that was like, whoa. And the very first one we went to was in Antigua. Yeah. And it was a rooftop um, uh, rest, restaurant, you know, and um, me being 26 and being told it's a cocktail party. Yeah. I remember in this really nice sort of fitted gold dress. Uh, yeah. And, Going, you know, makeup well done. Yeah. And I remember walking onto this, you know, um, a sort of rooftop, and all of our sort of customers were there. There was, you know, the the, the CEO of, of, of Scotia Bank. There yeah. was the minister of this, and you know, as you know, all of this. Yes, yes. And, um, I then saw that the um, the men were holding their tummies in, and the wives were holding their tummy in because this young, glamorous. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I mean, I got invited onto yachts to this. Yeah. That. I guess it was it was very overwhelming. But yes. I have to say, on the second day, the second time I went, I wore a black suit rather right. than my black. Right, right. You live in there, and you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Surround the space. Um, it was the toughest experience for me. Okay. Um, a young, um, and I was, I'll say woman of colour. Yeah. Uh, even though my team were um, all black within the office. Yeah, yeah. Um, they gave me the hardest time. Right. They, um, you know, they thought they'd come from England to take me. Yes, London. yes, yeah. Even though I'd gone to school there, um, it was one of those kind of quite strong perceptions. Yeah. And um, the support I got was from... The men in the business, the okay. okay. And I remember um, one of the um, the operations directors. Uh, he came in to see me, and he took me out for lunch. And he said to me, um, "You know, you're young and you're very bright." And um, and he said to me, "It was an interesting statement that he said. He said, you 'You're on just on the right side of sexy with your presence.'" Okay. Okay. And he said, so, you know, he says in terms of your, he says, you have got it spot on in the way that you dress. Yes. And you carry yourself. But be mindful. It was an interesting thing. Right, right, and, right. And it was because you were, I was single. Okay, okay. Um, because I, I can see all the red lights flashing. I can <laughs> see, can see all the, yes, yes. And then, you know, then there's, you know, the Caribbean being what it is, there's always lots of rumours and things. Yeah, and because yeah. Because nobody knows anything about you. you yeah, yeah. Creator. Yeah. It was a very tough environment for me. Okay. I was out for three years. Excellent. Well, you um, survived. Yeah. And even in that three years, I was then, um, uh, I was promoted. And yeah. There was, it was an interesting time because they were doing some mergers. Okay. Someone needed, you know, over... Particular level and above was going to have to reapply for their role. Okay. I was 
one of three that didn't. Um, the, um, the kind of global CEO has yes. selected me as one of the people who wanted to have a wider region. Okay, okay. Further. Um, so I think it was probably by that time of um, 15 or 16 islands in total that I had the accountability for. Okay, um, okay. And, uh, and I also was responsible for one, one of their years where they, they had the lowest trade debtor um, that they've had in, you know, in their sort of history as well in terms of collections and, you know, customer service and things. So right. that was probably one of my the most tough. So, so you, 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 you talked about confidence um, early on, being confidence. How long, and, you know, and I kind of heard sometimes a little bit of a maybe fake it till you make it type, type, you know, type of um, situations. So how big and how much has having, how much has confidence played, having, a good, having good confidence played within your career? And how do you regain your confidence when things get tough? Yeah, so I think um, my dad has been the one who's instilled the confidence in me. Um, okay. So you know, by start, you know, sort of starting off on, a, on an early journey, he would always say to me that um, there was only ever to be one man in his, in my life that I was ever to, um, <laughs> and that was him. Yes. So you know, he instilled some very good um, qualities, and my mum's an extremely strong and confident. Right. <laughs> In terms of you want to ask me the question again so I yes can... yes that's fine so well, I can't remember the question I can't remember the question but it's how big a part has um, confidence played in your career choices and how do you regain your confidence when times get tough Okay, so in terms of confidence, um, in terms of what it's played, it, it has played a, quite a significant um, part. Uh, I think for me, if I think that I can do, you know, some people say if they think they can do 60% of the job, they'll apply for it. Yeah. For me, if I think I can do 40%, then I'll apply for it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'll learn the rest. Um, yeah. I, um, I, I've got better at listening, because I was not okay. listening before, but I right. do listen active listening now um again those are things that as you know you learn along yes the long time. um but uh in terms of being confident i i i walk into a room with the knowledge that i think i'm the best person for the role i and hear that when you do feel that way yeah then you're able to articulate it you're able to give evidence of what you've done yeah and what you think that you will bring to the table yeah um i i also am very honest about who i am okay you know you, know, you go through some all of these kind of assessments that you do and they tell you what sort of personalities you are yes and everything. yes some yes. people are very uncomfortable about you know things that you you, you kind of know about yourself but you don't really want to hear it out loud yeah yeah um, and i and those types of things i've worked on over the years right i i never felt before that i could be intimidating but I damn well know I can be yeah. um so it's about using that when I need to opposed yeah. to yes yes oh. all the time yeah yeah I'm making sure that you've got that so I tend to try and make people a bit more comfortable in the room when okay. I'm there okay so you're, and it's also sometimes you might think that you know or have all the skills that you need to do a job Right. Um, but I'm better at bringing people in. That's yeah. 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 I also yeah. think I, I'm very, because I'm confident about who I am, I don't have any fear about yes. someone in my role. Yes. 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 If I trained up two or three people with good enough strength, it yeah. allows me to move on to the next role. Very much. Very much. Very much. I think I've always approached every role that I have to actually be working on my successor. So to enable me to move on because I want to leave a legacy, you know, and if you leave and if you're strong enough, the legacy will always be there, you know, even, even with the person will say, oh, that's so-and-so or so-and-so taught me how to do that or show me how to do that. So like you say, it's about having the confidence in yourself and not being threatened. And again, that's how we bring more women into the fray. Absolutely. And I guess, you know, you asked the question about, you know, how do you come bounce back? Yes. Um, when you're not, your confidence has been knocked. 
and I, and I think over the years I've had you know the knocks as you you can imagine throughout some of the, the roles I've I've been yeah. the only, only woman on the board I've been yeah. the only color you know on the board or the only building, color in the building yes you know, yes and sometimes you know there have been situations where you know your confidence has been knocked um I would say that I have I have a good network um and and although my mum would always say that you wouldn't know if I've got a pound or a million pounds in my right, right. right. What you see is yeah. probably what you see. Yeah. In terms of what helps me is I've got my own personal cheerleaders. My son is an, a fabulous cheerleader for me. Um, in the sense that, you know, I'll come back and I'll, you know, this has happened, etc. And he just says, Mum what but look at the things that you have done yeah yes. and and sometimes you kind of have a chance to look back and think about that and i'm i'm probably a lot more humble in terms of things so if i rather than me just go back and and and, and wallow i i allow yeah. myself a 24 hour wallow that's the max yeah yeah because i think that you you need to have the opportunity to wallow and be upset about something right then i think about well what's the plan now how do I go back in to that environment yeah. and hold my own? Yeah. So if it is that I've got to go in and make an apology. Yeah. You I do, you do it. Yeah. So, you know, I, I've had a, you know, a recent incident where we had um, a client who, who, who he wasn't right. Okay. I've been quite strong in the meeting about what it was. Okay. And he felt uh, undermined within the meeting. Right. So I took the opportunity to say to him, you know, in no form of fashion was I trying to undermine you. I think because the stakeholder engagement I'd done previously, um, I just we just needed to get to a particular point. And unfortunately, you know, because of some of the comments you were making, I was yeah. concerned and nervous that it was going to derail it. Right. But I, what I think that we need to do moving forward is that before our sessions, we're very clear. So the okay. we are, we are thinking before. Yeah. yeah. But I wanted yeah. to take the opportunity to say that if you felt undermined, that that wasn't what, what, what my intent. So, you know, you are yeah. Yeah. humble within it. Yes. Be defensive. So yeah. I've learned to be a lot less defensive about environments and situations. Yeah. So that you can come across and, and, and people respect you for that. Yeah. You touched on something there about having um, a good network. How important is how important is having a good network, and how do you go about nurturing or pulling that together? Um, I have to say that I previously never believed in having new friends or right. new. Yeah. yeah. So all of my friends were people I knew for twenty, thirty years plus. Okay. That has changed significantly in the last 10 years. Right. Um, because I think that when you're at different stages of your life, you need different yes. types of people to complement or support you. Right. So I think that for me, in terms of building that network, some of it's about having like-minded people. Yes, yes. Sometimes if you have like-minded like people, you've not got people to challenge you. Right. So I've also got a complement of diverse elements. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very different backgrounds, different ways of thinking, different industries. And you can pull on, on those different networks, especially as I've been growing the consultancy. It's yeah. Very that. And as I've, I'm reaching out to, to, to various different things, before I wouldn't ask a question, yeah. And ask people for a view to help me with something. I would always just research it and do it myself. Right, right. What I found is that when you, you reach out and you build a network or you reach out to someone who's different, mm -hmm. there's something that you wouldn't have thought of because that's not the way that you think. Very much. That's very not the much. way that you operate. Yeah. And even if you have got someone who's very, very similar to you, they can't. Sometimes they see, because of the similarity, they see where you're going wrong. Right, right, right. And that's quite an interesting, because they can see the reflection in it, and, and, and sometimes yeah. that helps them as much as it helps you. Yeah, yeah, understood. 
Yeah. Okay, excellent, excellent. So we're having great conversation here, so and I've hardly got through any half my questions. <laughs> so that no problem though, that's good, that's good, that's good. So Karen, share with us a success quote or mantra that you use, uh, why it's meaningful for you. Oh, success. Um, I would say for me, it's be the best self that you can be. Okay. okay. Because I think that people often compare themselves to others for success. They see what others have, yeah. what others do, yeah. what other relationships are like. Yeah. And have that view that that's what success is. Right. We've all got different opportunities, experiences. We've also got different drivers to what we do. Yeah. That's the most important. I remember one of my friends um, when we were younger saying to me, can't believe it, you know, you're a single parent um, and you, you get to travel, you go all of these nice places and do this and etc." And, you know, I, I can't do that. You know, I'm married, I've got you know, two kids and mm. I can't do all of those things. And I said to her, when we were at school, tell me what you wanted to do. She said, oh, yeah, I want to get married and have you know, kids. Well, that was succeeded. Yeah. That yeah. was what you dreamed of. Yeah, yeah. My dream was very different. My dream wasn't to be a single mum with, with a single yeah. mother. That was yeah. my dream. But, uh, but I wanted, to, I always was creative, innovative, and, and I always was interested in travel and exploration. That's always right. been me. I wanted yeah. to be an astronaut. So, yeah. you know, that's, yeah. you know, <laughs> you know, there's, there's very different dreams. Yeah. Well, I definitely, it's about, you definitely be the best self that you can be. Yeah. Because that's what you've got control over. You yeah. have no control over yeah. anything yeah. else. Yeah. And that's your competition. You are your competition, not anybody else, because especially in this age, and I know people go on about it, we sound a bit old, but with social media and stuff like that, it's a facade. Half the time it is a facade because people are creating what the perception they want you to have of them. It's not necessarily real. So like you say, be the best you can be. Look to, your, look to yourself and, 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 guide, and guide yourself there. And we take it, you know, don't get me wrong, I, I take advantage of the social media platforms. Yes, yes. You know, they're there um, and you use them in various different ways. You've got your private ones, you've got your business yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and you are, because it's about an experience and a dream, you're helping people to realise that. Yeah, sometimes yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or, you know, yeah. So, so, Karen, looking back, what advice would you give to your teenage self? I know you said you're a little bit rebellious, um, but what, what advice would you give your teenage self? Well, when I say rebellious, I was one of these sort of very quiet rebellious ones. In right. Sense. Um, but those are the deadly ones. Yeah. <laughs> I did, I, you know, on the surface, um, I was absolutely very good. Right. So um, I didn't very rarely fell out with, you know, parents or anything like that or... You know, I would be home on time, all of yeah. that. Yeah. What I would say to my, my teenage self is, don't sweat it, you make it. Yeah. Nice. You nice. 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 And if you could choose your own mentor, who would it be and why? Oh, Michelle Obama. Okay, Michelle, come, Michelle comes highly recommended. And why, why, <laughs> Mich why, why, why Michelle? <laughs> why Michelle? I think that she stays true to who she is. Yes. So even yeah. through all of that, yeah. uh, and, you know, now that she's come out of the White House, she talks about, um, you know, the racism she experienced, yeah. the challenges she experienced, you know, some of the derogatory things that you've yeah. seen. Yeah. But she stayed regal. Yeah. She yeah. stayed... I, every time I see and I hear her speak, I get goose pimples. Right. And I, usually, I, I, I'm one that, that personally does, hasn't taken a mentor. I haven't taken yeah. one because, yeah. because of who I am, because of the yes. type of personality that I yeah. am. Yeah. But if you're given the opportunity, yeah. I'd be sitting right next to Michelle. Fantastic. 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 And Karen, what are the three things you've learned about yourself during your career? Um. I'm more powerful than I think I am. Excellent. Um, I'm 
a good, I, I would say a good leader. Okay. And that I can learn a lot from others. Excellent. 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 Always learning. Always learning. So what would you say are your imperfections and how do you embrace them? So I can get obsessive about a particular subject. Yes. So when I was <laughs> before getting married, and before my husband, I've known my husband now for 23 years. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so that's a whole new show, so we won't go right. into that. Right, okay, cool. <laughs> um, when we decided we were going to get married, I watched every single wedding show and I bought Oh everything. my gosh. <laughs> um, <laughs> then I moved, you know, then when we bought some land and we were going to build, I, you know, watched every show, had every yeah. book. You know, with every, so when it comes to, I am dogged when it comes to a subject. Yeah. So if I'm interested in something, yeah. then I can be quite bloody minded about getting it done. Right. Um, I'm extremely spontaneous. Okay. It can be both a positive and a negative. So um, the positive is that, you know, it means that you live your life the way that you yeah. want to. Yeah. Negatively, sometimes you don't always think about the consequences. Okay. <laughs> has, there, has, there been a, has there been a time where your spontaneity has got you into some trouble you shouldn't have got into? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I would say, probably. I, I think, okay. yeah, I would say yes. I would say yes. Um, I, I lived in the moment. Yeah. Um, and uh, yes, but... I always turn it around in the end. Yeah, of course, of course. That's what we have to do. That's what we have to do. I keep saying, let's have the MacGyver method. Let's find see. Let's let's turn it into something. Let's create something. You know, we. This is this, this. You know, there's nothing wrong. This is a spontaneity at its best. <laughs> so, Karen, what's your definition of success? I know we touched on it a bit earlier, but what's your definition of success? Um, my definition of success is. Doing what you want to do. Okay. And doing it well. Okay. Okay. Because I think that we have, all have the opportunity. I think we, the majority of people have yes. the opportunity. What it is, is whether or not we take it. Right. Right. And sometimes people are sitting, waiting for things to oh, come yeah. to Yeah. Yeah. We have to sometimes go and put ourselves out there. And yeah. also taking risks. Yes. You know, so, um, I'm not saying I would, you know, a lot of people I say don't take the type of risk that I take. Yeah. You know, I remember when I was buying my, my, my second house that I, um, I went to, you know, I'd gone through the process and I was waiting because it was taking like a long time for yes. about nine months for the, the whole process. By that time, I had chosen to leave the job that I was in. Okay. So when it came through, I didn't actually have a job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, within four weeks of me moving in, right, you had one. I didn't have one. Yeah, yeah. But for most people, they wouldn't take that kind of risk. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, it's kind yeah. of. I need to make sure I've got the income coming in, and you know, yes. whatever the case. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I think it's those types of risks. Okay. Risks. Calculated risks. Calculated risks. Calculated risks. Um, you know that, that you can take, and so yeah. success. Success is whatever makes you happy excellent and i think you've got to be passionate about what it is that you're doing yeah um, i know for me i couldn't go back to being anyone's employee that doesn't work for me but for others right. that works well. yes, yes. Um, and but it so it is just about doing okay what makes you happy and uh, because you were a long time as they say a long time dead, dead a long time dead <laughs> yes yes <laughs> yeah. so you know take the opportunities um We've had a lot of um, bereavement in our family um, okay. recently. Um, my grandmother passed away this week alone. Right. And she was 94. Okay. She lived. Yeah. I mean, she really lived. She travelled. Um, you know, often you'd call and say, where are you going, Grant? Oh, I'm just off to Jerusalem. Oh, I'm off Lovely. to Canada. Okay. And, up in, and, you know, she travelled up to about three or four years ago. She was still travelling. Her mind was still travelling. Yes, yes. When I spoke to her, she'd be... I want to go to Barbados. I want to go to here. But, yeah. And I think success is if you can write on your tombstone. Yeah. I lived the way I wanted to. 
Excellent. Yeah, I think it's, it's success. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. It, whatever is. That. it is, it is, it is. And lastly, Karen, what does it mean to you to be your own hero? I think after, on the day of my graduation, yeah. That I how do you feel? Yeah. And I said, I feel content. And I'm actually very proud of who I am. Yeah. I've been through, but also what it's empowered me to do. Okay. So I'm in a position to help others. Yes. And every time I succeed or every time I secure a large contract right. don't think about what can I spend it on for me yeah and I think oh my god who else can I help now oh so for me being my own hero is the ability to quietly help others because it doesn't have yeah. to be out yes yeah you know, yeah but being in a position to be able to do so and whether or not that's by offering people work being able to give them money giving opportunities, whatever it is. Yeah. That's what it means to me. Means Excellent. To me. Excellent. Well, thank you for that. That was great. Uh, that's a fantastic conversation. Uh, if people, if our listeners want to get hold of you or get in touch with you about the work you're doing, how can they do that? Okay. So um, best email address to probably get yeah. um, KTR. So that's K for Kilo, T for Tango, R. Uh, for Romeo at premierchange.com. If you contact me on that, then any of our businesses, whether it be the Flexi Bench, whether it's Premier Change, or whether it's Premier Angels, or even whether or not it's a Subdate Pack Paradise, I can, you know, I will always um, respond to you via that. that That's excellent. And I'll make sure all your contact details go in the show notes as well. So, Karen, all that remains for me to say is thank you so much. Um, for your time this morning. I know it's this morning here, it's afternoon for you there. Um, thank you so much for your time today and we'll speak soon. Definitely. Thanks a lot. Thank Thanks. you. And that was Karen. I hope you really enjoyed that interview as much as I did. She had some great things to say. And one of the things that really stood out for me there was defining your own success. And don't look to other people as to what they're doing or, you know, to what you want to achieve. Make your own, define what your success criteria is and work towards that. So great piece of information, um, inspiring information there from Karen. Now, as ever, I thank you for listening in to listening into the podcast each week, each week. And again, if the tips and interviews we share in each episode have helped you grow in confidence and inspired you to improve your future, Head over to iTunes and subscribe to the show and leave your review and let me know what you think of the show. And follow me if you like what you hear. Follow me for your weekly dose of clarity, courage and confidence on Facebook as I am Janice Sutherland so you can live the, you, the, so you can live the life you deserve. Until next time.